talents or transcription activator like effector nucleases. What are they? How do they work? And why are they useful? Talents are one of the three most common techniques along with sync finger nucleases or ZFNs and CRISPR-Cas9 that we currently use in gene editing. In fact, one simplified way to think of all three of these methods is as iterative versions of genetic editing where ZFNs are the most crude or basic version, version 1, and CRISPR-Cas9 is the most commonly utilized, or version 3, due to its simplicity, versatility, as well as precision. Talent, which we will talk about today, can be considered as version 2. So what are talents? Tal effectors are proteins that are secreted by Xanthomonas bacteria, which is a type of plant bacteria, when these infect plants. These tails contain highly conserved repeats. These repeats are also called uh, repeat variable residues or RVDs and act as a sort of key, allowing for very specific binding to a specific section of DNA. Talents are made by fusing these tails with FOK1, FOK1 endonuclease used to cut the DNA at the particular point we wish to cut it at. Putting it another way, fusing the tails and FOK1 endonuclease together allows us to create a highly specific gene scissor. If you have watched my video on sync finger nucleases, this uh, FOK1 enzyme probably sounds familiar since it is used for the exact same purposes in that technique as well. But what about how these tail ends actually work in action? Well, to use this technique, the talent construct specific for the DNA sequences in question first has to be engineered. Then this construct is inserted into a plasmid, a plasmid being a circular piece of DNA inside a eukaryotic cell. This plasmid is transfected, or in other words, inserted into the cell, and the talent catches a ride with the plasmid, since it has been inserted into it. Once inside the cell, the DNA of the plasmid gets expressed, and with it, the talent also gets expressed. And in this manner, it is free to enter the nucleus. Once inside of the nucleus, it binds to its specific section of DNA thanks to the repeat variable residues or RVD, which again works similar to a key and a lock. Then the FOC1 creates a cut into the DNA. This process happens on the other side of the double-stranded DNA at the same time, creating a double-stranded break in this DNA. By varying exactly how the talons cut the DNA and whether or not it does so in the presence of an alternative DNA strand, a gene can either be deleted or altered. Again, this is very similar to how sync finger nuclease gene editing works. Gene editing in general is a rather controversial topic, however, a large part is due to the massive impact it could have on society, both good and bad, but in my opinion, honestly, mostly good. But I do understand the concerns that a lot of people have, and I feel that it's also warranted partly due to how new this technique still is and uh, everything new tends to be a little bit scary at first but also there are a lot of ethical concerns that need to be raised and thought about when it comes to genetical engineering and honestly that's something for an entire other video but for now at this point i would say that one thing is certain and that is that genetic engineering in some form or another is not going anywhere. We are going to use this technique in the future. The question is how much and in what contexts. The technique overall is simply too useful for us to ignore, so the question rather becomes to what extent do we want to limit its uses. If you found today's video informative, please take a second and share it with someone who could benefit as well. It helps me out massively. Also, if there is a topic you would like me to cover, please go ahead and comment it below. Next, I have linked my videos on sync finger nucleases as well as CRISPR-Cas9, so if that sounds interesting, click on one of the videos on the screen now. Until next time!